Hey, you listen to the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 261. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Ryan. And we're going to continue the arc of the auto deck. Then we talk about everybody's least favorite commander. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole ton is going down. We're back in the CCO Studio 2. Yes. We're recording... Two different decks in one episode, both focusing around everybody's least favorite commander to see show up literally anywhere. We've got some stories to tell, some people to thank. Before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. Their source for all your gaming needs. Ooh, very much so. And I just got some Fusion mail in the post box today. Oh, shit. Was there anything good? No idea. I didn't open it yet because as soon as uh, Rebecca walked in the door... I walked out the door to come here. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like in the Christmas when you get home. A little bit, yeah. I think probably it's like one 24-cent foil that I ordered for like Lord of Tressorhorn and then a bunch of stuff that I ordered to paint for various peoples in the nation who wanted commissioned altered cards. Every Thursday on our Facebook page is where you get the non-commissioned altered yeah, art cards. Yeah, and of course, CCO Fusion 5 for 5% off that 24-cent jank ass foil <laughs> <laughs> so so that was excellent and yeah now we're here on a on a on a weird night on a tuesday night this is it's a little strange there's like people in here and yeah it's, it's kind of dark because usually when we come in on the weekdays the nights, sun is shining right in here yeah but yeah. it's not today this is does that mean that summer is days is slowly yeah. dwindling i hate it days are getting shorter i hate it that's a real thing in canada the days get so long in the summer that it's like daytime at 11 p.m yeah i love that and I like that. and in winter it becomes dark at six dark or at five, five yeah. even yeah i so. come home from work at 4 30 and the sun's going down like oh Fuck, I hate winter. Yeah, it's and it's hard to drive in the winter, hey, because the sun only gets so high in the horizon. It's always in your front window. Yeah, when you're driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It that's, sucks. that's real thing. That's more general interest interest <laughs> stuff, hey. G G G G O. G, uh, well, G I C O. That sounds kind of like an '80s cartoon that you might like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably watch it if it exists. I would definitely. Watch oh it. yeah, if it exists and there's a cartoon of it, Brandon will watch yeah, it. I I probably will. I've started watching uh, this. Why not? We're talking about cartoons. The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Yes. You ever seen that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they, like, didn't have the 13th ghost, didn't show up in the series because the series got canceled because it kind of sucked. And then uh, apparently they wanted to do, like, a, 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 a modern movie of it with, like, the 13th ghost where they finally put them all back in the... Uh, what the hell was it? I forget uh, what it is now. A yeah. box or a lamp or whatever the hell the yeah, fucking yeah, ghosts yeah. came out of. But, like, Vincent Price is dead and everybody's dead. So I don't know if they're going to do it. This got this got dark pretty quick. <laughs> well, cartoons, man, they're they're fun, but when they're from back in the '60s, everybody's dead. Yeah, yeah. Except for everybody in Scooby Doo, they were just wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Thirteen Ghosts were real. Oh, they were all real. And I always thought it was kind of funny because the guy that was it Matthew Lillard that played Shaggy in the Scooby Doo movie, yeah, also played the psychic detective from the Thirteen Ghosts. And it's like, why Why was there no crossover there? Why was there no crossover there? <laughs> Scooby-Doo did not appear in the 13 Ghosts. Only the Sol Ring that we got from the last GP Vegas made an appearance. And oh, you're talking about the movie 13 Ghosts? Yeah. Like well, where, where, the, where the juggernaut picks that guy up and bends him in half backwards? Yeah. How come I know that movie reference? That's a... That's a weird one, That's eh? a strange one to, to get. Yeah, that was a good show, though. It gets... I don't think it gets, gets the respect it, it deserves. Uh, yeah, but because it gets so weird. Oh well, yeah, what's wrong with weird? Nothing, but it's like you're you're thinking that you're gonna watch like a r legitimate horror movie that isn't like too slasher flicky. It's an actual scary horror movie with ghosts and shit. Yeah. And then it turns into wait a second, is this a slasher movie? And then it turns into wait a second, is this the cube? Is this the sphere? <laughs> yeah. How do I know those? <laughs> Queen Latifah's in the sphere? You know the sphere. Oh, yeah. Right? Where they're under the water and all those octopuses kill her or those jellyfish or whatever they are, right? Yeah, man. That was a, that was a hell of a movie. That was a weird-ass yeah. movie. Cube was also good, for the record. I don't know if you've ever seen Cube. I think you just might know Cube because I talk about Cube all the time. Yeah, and, and then, it, well, too, Hypercube. Exactly. You there know what is. we need? What this we need? is what we mother-ass need. And, and, and Editor Joe Mummy, you'll put this on the screen after he fixes maybe our color grading because we look pretty <laughs> gray in this dark light. We need a movie. 
Remember the cartoon, the, the digitally animated YTV cartoon reboot? Yeah. And that big old purple cube thing came down and they'd all try to run away because when they get sucked into the purple cube, it was a game? Yeah, danger incoming game, yeah. We need that movie. Like, reboot, incoming game, purple cube movie. Did they not already do that? Did they not do that? You would know. So if they did... In my brain, I feel like they did it, but maybe they didn't. Maybe just because we talked about it, we really want it. I, I don't know. I didn't, once they kind of got all serious with it and Enzo went to the internet and got a bunch of viruses and the, the, oh, little, yeah. the little sea, the little mermaid girl got turned into like a, a little sex kitten and Dot got her eyeball gouged out. What in the ass? And Hexadecimal was a dominatrix. And then she merged with Megabyte to turn into Venom. Like the show just got are weird. Are we even talking about the same thing anymore? Yes, <laughs> that's the thing. Like the show just got crazy. The last episode that was like reboot, you know, like they hit the little thing on his fucking hat and it turns into a dude. Was the episode where they were like mortal combating each other and Enzo got his eyeball like burned out by Scorpion. And it was a whole thing. And wow. then it was just crazy from there on. And there was the Silver Surfer was in it. And it, like, it sounds like I'm just saying words it in sounds, this it's, microphone. But it's true. It, it Anyone sounds who's like seen you're it talking knows. about the MCU. I know. Venom, Silver Surfer. Yeah, here's, uh, I'll catch a couple other deep cuts. Maybe people in CCO Nation are going to know. Oh. They're going to know. This is what we need more of. And I, I think that the story might actually be complete. And the series is, is air quotes, finished. But get this. We need... <clears throat> if it's not finished, we need Cyber Six. Remember that one? I know Bionic Six. No, this is Cyber Six. This was Adrian, the teacher, becomes. Uh, I, I think I think he's a dude during the day, but I haven't seen it for a long time. So correct me if I'm wrong. If you know, he's a dude during the day, but then he dresses up as like a chick in leather at night, who's like sisters with a cat. She he used to be her brother, but then. He fell off a cliff, and then like his brain got harvested and put into a into a panther cat. Yeah, you would like it too. What you, the no, hell? No, you would totally like this cartoon. Like at first, I thought you were talking about the magic school bus, <laughs> right? I got one more, and this is a legitimate Emmy-winning cartoon that we need more of because I think there's only like two and a half seasons. Todd McFarlane Spawn. We need that. We need that cartoon. That was not too bad. That was a good ass cartoon. No, Even okay. Rebecca liked that cartoon. Dang. Yeah. Rebecca hates cartoons. Yeah, she's no fun. I know. <laughs> That's why you married her and I didn't. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I hate fun. <laughs> hey, man, if you didn't have me, you'd just be sitting there looking like this all the time. You mean like you? And you'd know what I was, what, what he was going to be looking like if you were watching us on YouTube. And if you're listening to us, you should be watching on YouTube because it's lots of fun. And you're fucking listening anyway. Yeah, just... just just minus the screen and just listen to our sultry YouTube voices. We yeah. sound the same. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you said you're getting us back down to earth. I did. How often does that happen? Yeah. I'm the one that gets us you back You were saying track. that I look grumpy and then you do the segue? What the fuck this is, is happening? DDO. Is this, yeah. This is Tuesday night DDO <laughs> with, with Rando and Brian. Yeah. 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 Watching the Yankees, not even the Blue Jays. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Business. Bi business. Business. Right. Why are we here again? To do a podcast based on the commander format within Magic the Gathering, talking about Urza, Lord, High, Artificer. But before we get to him. Oh, Urza. You mentioned subscribing on YouTube. I did. Just fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Second thing. CCO Podcast, CCO Brando on Twitter, oh, yeah. and Commander Cookout Facebook page. Those are the socials. You get on those, gives you a chance to win our secret layer call time one giveaway with the with the prime time. And the Uro. And the Frost Titan. Yeah. And I think we've got one final week. The last Tuesday in August is when we're gonna give that away. Let me just let me just make double check. Make double sure. Yeah, August 31st. We're going to give that puppy away. Why don't the other Titans have nicknames? Why prime is, time. Because none of them are fucking prime time. They're, they're pretty good. Like People play Grave Titan and everyone's like, oh, it's a Grave Titan. And then they immediately kill it every time. Well, that's what they did to, to, to prime time too. And then he got banned. He got killed. He had the ultimate death. <laughs> he got <laughs> Thanos vain. snapped his fingers in prime time. And no, he no here no more. Well, now we have Grave Titan. Maybe we should get him a nickname. Yeah, 
down uh, in the comments of whatever you're listening to, watching us on, Grave Titan Nickname. Who do you call them around your table? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And speaking of the comments, if you guessed Lord High Artificer Urza from the pre show, yeah. you are entered to win a stinky old booster pack that's from the. From the booster pack game. game. Explaining the hints, our boy Lenny, F you Lenny, as we affectionately call him around here, wrote a article for EDHREC.com about his gumball Urza deck, and it's going to be featured on the show, along with this other deck from... I've got it right here, I've got it right here. Tell me. Patreon supporter, Chris Motherass Bones. Just Chris Bones. Chris Bones. Chris Bones, but we can call him Mother Ass. We can call him whatever we want. Zenvazar on, on Architect. Architect. I'm sure that's what his name on Discord is and or was, except for in CCO Nation land. Probably. Because he's Chris Bones. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, speaking of hints, speaking of giveaways, speaking of stinky onion bag. Holy shit. Last week's winner. Last week's winner. They guessed Zerzi. Zerzoth. Yeah. Yeah, Big Zers. Fuck, that was a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> and a good deck, too. I got fun. the winner right here. Got the winner right here. Sounds like a real YouTube name. Okay. JR Bronco7. That's 100% his real name. I bet you. That's his name at birth, on his birth certificate. When I, somebody says, let me see your birth certificate, he whips it out, and that is what it says on it. There's probably even an underscore in it, isn't there? No, there's, there's not. Fake name. Do you think that this guy it's, isn't really Do you think it's a Denver Broncos fan who likes John Elway? He's the second best quarterback to ever play for the Denver Broncos? Maybe. Because he was number seven and he's, he was a Bronco. He's the second best? Peyton Mother Ass Manning. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. The Broncos. Now, I think John Elway has two Super Bowls with the Broncos, but maybe just one. I don't know. Maybe Matt Morgan can can can, can correct me if he's listening. But no. Peyton's for sure got one, and he's first ballot Hall of Famer just the other day. Now, John Elway is not the best, but he's the one that has a video game named after him. So I'm going to have I'm to pretty sure that's disagree and say that uh, John Elway might be the best Broncos quarterback. I think that's I think that's Madden. No, it's it's definitely John Elway. He definitely has a game named after him. He does? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. well, maybe one day Peyton Manning will have that too. Madden didn't even play football. I don't even understand how he... He played football because he talks about football and he played it. <laughs> Like, it's not called Don <laughs> Cherry's NHL Hockey. <laughs> right? Deep cut. Ron McLean, NHL 2007. That's never happened. What is... I are, don't understand are, it. Are people in the land of the free even going to get those references? I assume I so. There's, I think Coach's Corner was a thing down in the States. Was it not? Uh, I'm sure it was. Probably. Well, it, Don Cherry was a coach, a Stanley Cup winning coach for the for the Bruins. Yeah. In the, what is it, 64 or 74? Yeah, I don't he, remember. He said some racist shit on the, whatever. Yeah. The, the point We're is. We're not giving him any more space or time. The point is his name is not attached to the NHL hockey franchise of video games. It's, but the point I'm making, yeah, whereas Madden was. I see, I see. And I get you. I don't understand. The, and they're all from the same company. Tiger Woods is the golf yeah, guy, EA Sports right? does them, right? Yeah, but they don't, I don't know, it's not John Cena 2021. <laughs> Can you imagine if it was, though? Oh, Just man. You all rap songs and spinning I've, clocks. You'd play it. I'd probably play it, yeah. You'd play it. I, I would. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We're, we're a little bit, a little bit derailed. Us? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Give Urza, am I saying the name right? Lord High Artificer. Artificer, yeah. It's, Artificer, it's Artificer. I got all the words right, though, right? Oh, yeah. He's he's a 1-4 for yeah. Blue Blue 2. When he comes into play, you get a 0-0 zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token with. This creature gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact you control. New paragraph. Tap an untapped artifact you control, add blue. Next paragraph. Wait, there's more? Of course there is. 5. Shuffle your library, exile the top card. Until end of turn, you may play that card for free. Okay. So he mines desires. No, that's temp. Uh, is that, not mines desire. It's temporal aperture. Is that not mines desire? No, it didn't cost it's, the same as mines. It's desire. close. What it's, does mines desire do? It exiles the top of your library, and then you can cast it for free. Um, storm. But the ability on Urza is temper temporal aperture. Look it up, I dare you. Anyways, we're gonna call those constructs. That is that is the 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 zero zero bigliness equal to your artifacts. We've got Talarian Academy right on your guy that turns off stacks pieces. 
that if you tap them, they don't work anymore, which is great. And then we've got Temporal Aperture. That is five or two mana. You pay five, tap, shuffle your library, re <laughs> then reveal the top card until end of turn for as long as that card remains on the top of your library. Play it and... Uh, you may play it with... You fucking play it. You can play it for free. It's even got Urza in the picture. Yeah. Temporal Aperture. Yeah, Joe will have it on the screen right now. Costs a whopping... Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> 94 cents? That's, what the hell? That's but the gold border that's one. That's the gold border one. The real one's like 24 bucks. But it taps. Temporal Aperture is terrible. Taps. Yeah, but when you can do it over and over again on your boy Urza. Yeah, then it's pretty good. Or you just substitute, uh, you just play Urza like zero drop dot deck, and you you mother ass play Mind's Desire and storm through your entire deck. So you just play Urza the deck then? Is that what you're, yeah, you're suggesting? Yeah, so, okay, well, let's get into it I think that's the point that we were getting at, yeah. Let's get into it. We've got two decks, and as part of the art of deck building arc, we want to take a look at two different Urza decks that... I think, and me probably agree, are different than regular that Urza deck. And when, when we say that Urza deck, what do we mean? Well, the deck that's all blue control meant to just draw your entire deck immediately and play a Thassa's Oracle and win. Uh -huh. And then play stuff like Winter Orb and other stacks pieces that you can tap down to, play, to break parity, thereby allowing you to play magic while nobody else gets to play magic. So we play Winter Orb and... Yeah. Our three opponents can't. This is scumbag um, uh, Brian and Rando from yeah. DDO mm -hmm. are playing Urza together, and we're we're con we're conversing and cheating. It was a team, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And we play a Winter Orb. Yeah. Players two, three, and four can't untap. Yeah, they untap. What is it? Three things, two things. Uh, two doesn't matter. Yeah, fuck them. Few things. Yes, few things instead of all of them. That's right. End of player four's turn. We go tap our Winter Orb for a blue. Play Brainstorm, because <laughs> of course we would. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, we'd crack a fetch line, play, play, play Brainstorm. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Waste everybody's time. Yep. And then on our turn, because our Winter Orb's tapped, we untap everything. Yeah, because Winter Orb is one of those artifacts that you can turn off and on. It yes. It used to be an artifact thing. Howling Mine yep. and uh, there's a few Trinisphere and Winter Orb. And there's a, there's a bunch Trinisphere works like that? It sure does. Wow. Yeah. I okay. Play, I play Trinisphere in decks. I don't know how that shit works. Okay. Well, two things. The two decks we're looking at today mm -hmm. aren't... They aren't that. That. No. Yeah. The first deck that, that we're looking at here is Construct Voltron. What? Yes. <laughs> now, couple things. There's still some things that make this look, feel, seem like Urza. Dot deck. Right? Where it's like... How much of this can we squeeze in to have, like, a good deck that yeah. isn't going to be that deck? Where's the line? And is it a hard line or is it eh, great? I think it's a hard line that it's a hard line. I don't want to say it's a hard line not to cross, but I think it's an, it's an easy line to cross and not know it. Because you're going to have, remember we were talking about last week, we're going to have those games where your deck is just going to just, sometimes it'll just fizzle and poop out. This is the one that instead of doing that, it'll do the exact opposite of that. It's going to accelerate you so damn fast. Oh, yeah, last week. That everybody's we going to not believe you the next time you play the deck. Yes, when we were talking with Zerzoth and Underworld Breach and and sacrificing the the, the, the yeah. token that you get from Zerzoth. Yeah, someday you're just like well, someday you're just going to wheel through your whole deck and just win, whereas other times you're going to just be attacking literally with a pair of 1-1s one every turn. Yes. Just and for laughs, right? This, is, this deck could go turn one... Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox, Urza, like turn one. Yeah. And then turn two, go Trinisphere, and then proceed to play three and four drops for the rest of the game, not being stuck under Trinisphere lock because you've already ramped. Yeah. And you have to then convince your, your opponents, your play group, that this isn't that deck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Even though, like, at that in that game it is because it can be. This, this first deck can be that. Lenny's... Well, hold on. Before we get to Lenny's, yeah, we actually forgot one more piece of quick business. Oh, shit. We had a patron increase that we have to say thank you to. Hit him. Hit him, hit him with the truth. Hit him. hit him with the truth, I mean, what's his name? His name, Tom Gilder, increased and needs a nickname. And I would very much like it to be just Tom Gilder Baron. <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't it? Gilder Baron? Gilder Baron. That's the thing that, like, attacks and... Doubles counters on things? Yeah, you untap it to double counters, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of that uh, Eventide shit. Was it Eventide or Shadowmore? 
Man, am I schooling you on the... Yeah, it's even tied because it was green blue. Well, Joel, have a little check mark or a little X over top Brando's face. Yeah. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, Gilder Baron, very much appreciate the yeah. support, the continued support. Thank you very much. Yeah, big F you, homie. Should, should we talk about these decks? Yes. Let's get to the decks. We're going to move over to Lenny's deck, which is on EDH Rec. Links to both decks will be in the show notes. And we're going to give you the, the, the Coles Notes 10,000 foot view of Lenny's deck. And then we'll kind of compare and contrast. We'll talk some specific cards and and we'll get in there. It's gonna be gonna be a good time. Okay, Lenny's deck. Handily, if you click on the link to the article that's included down below, like Ryan said, you will also get a at the top of said article, he actually has a here's a typical Urza list. And he has some of the more typical things that you will probably see if you're playing that deck. So if you're interested in doing Urza that dot deck, there's a handy not a primer, but a deck list for you. The I believe it's the average deck from EDH Rec. Yeah. 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 So today we're featuring what is called Gumball Machine of Urza. And it, it sounds like it's like a cute and whimsical gumball machine, right? Like the swirly thing, the gumball rolls down, goes through the catapult, has to journey fucking to Mordor, past the rock that looks like a long neck, yeah. and then it comes into the little metal flapper thing. Yeah, and then you put it in your mouth and it's like 25 years old and you bite down on it and it hurts your teeth. Yes. It makes your gums all blue. Also, or yes. green or whatever the hell color gumball it is. But what, what, it, what it really means or what the original meaning of gumball was, was uh, I think a build challenge that Lenny did with some friends, some people in the nation and the magic community at large where you build a deck where no, no card in it could have an average price from TCG player of more than 25 cents, a.k.a. the cost of a gumball in said whirly wonky machine. Correct. So Gumball Urza is very budget and as such I think doesn't include things like Trinisphere or what? What else? Stacks pieces, Chrome Moxes, Mana Vaults, what have you, right? It doesn't have Rift, it doesn't have Force, either of the Forces, it doesn't play Pact. There's lots of stuff that you would expect to see in like a, a hard blue deck that are definitely not here. Yeah, so you're missing all of the main control elements or the one-for-one -one control elements and Rift, and you're yeah. missing the fast mana, and you're missing the stacks pieces. Right. Have you played against Lenny's Urza Gumball deck? Bunch of times. Bunch of times? Bunch of times. I played against it one or two times, yeah. and typically it's it's like make a construct or bounce Urza, make several constructs, and yeah. they all pump each other, right? Yeah. They give each other kind of like a coat of arms. Yes. C coat of Carns. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. Got there. Yeah. yeah. That one was for free, Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know what would be cool? What is if, if instead of being constructs, they were Carnlings? Carnlings? <laughs> yeah. Because Urza built Karn, right? Yes. They could be little Carnlings. Like, he, he, he misses Karn now that he took off and is doing Karn shit, so he, like, Built a little one that follows them around. Yeah, like or like little carn stuffies. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. That'd be cool. So what? What of this deck do do you think? Other than having none of that stuff, what do you think makes it stand out? Or what do you think makes it the deck that it is? The thing that I always noticed about this is it manages to do carn stuff in a manner that is. <laughs> I don't want to say it's fair because it's still not, but it does Karn things at a level that I think when they printed Karn, they were thinking this is going to be fun because this, and this is the deck that kind of does that where it, yes, it's dirtily and yes, it does all of the Karn things with bouncing Karn and making a bazillion tokens and swinging in with these huge creatures using shitty artifacts as, you know, halfway decent mana rocks to, to just power this ridiculous machine that just pumps out giant dudes and I think that that's pretty cool and then every so often you'd have some mana left over some untapped artifacts so you spin the wheel and play something for free yes yeah end of turn or whatever no or is it only as a sorcery for Urza's last ability this is Urza right? oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, well, on the EDH Rec article that we're looking at, and again, we wanted to link to this because it has the average deck and Lenny's deck as per like when the article was was written. I'm seeing things like 
artif- artificers? Artificer? What do you say? Artificers. What do I say? Artificers assistant, which lets you scry when you cast a historic spell. I'm seeing things like like the hound that lets you untap stuff, or sorry, investigate with Floodhound, which mm-hmm. would give you an artifact to pump your constructs. It gives you a clue. That then you can sacrifice for card draw later. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at like Hedron Crawler and Mannequin, which are artifacts that tap for mana, and then things that let you untap artifacts when you cast other artifacts. You can see how it's starting to sound like a, a swirly, whirly, gumball, catapulting, shooting type of machine. Exactly. And it, it's, it's funny that that's how it works, because that's how it's named, but that's not why it was originally named that. I think that that's such an interesting, like... It's all those things. So yeah. you can just say, yes. yes. <laughs> all of that stuff you just said. Yes, yeah. you're right. Yes, you're right. Okay, that's the top-down view. Let's jump back over to Chris Bones's deck and check out some of the... Uh, I don't know. We said that it had some fast mana, Chrome Mox and Mana Crypt and Everflowing Chalice. That kind of counts as fast mana when you can just multi-kick it a thousand times. Or you could play it for zero and just still tap it for mana because it's Urza. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God damn, my fucking Urza. <laughs> we are, in in this deck, playing like an Archmage's Charm, Rift, Fierce Guardianship, Flusterstorm, Force of Negation, Muddle the Mixture, which is a counterspell or a tutor, okay, Pact, mm-hmm. Pongify, Rapid Hybe, and Swan Song. Yeah. Okay, so like, mm-hmm. that's that's it, right? Yeah, he's got like the, basically the whole Urza protection package going on. Yeah, so th- that much of the deck makes it the deck, right? It has the protection package of the that deck, and actually it's got a lot of the ramp that would go in that deck, and a lot of the cards that would go in that deck, but the, I think the end goal of this deck is to win with attacking with one great big dude, as, Which as makes, it lacks the really, the, I don't want to say it lacks the capability to make, like bounce Urza a million times and just make a ton of constructs, because it, it doesn't really do that, but, so it's, it's kind of trying to just powered a bunch of artifacts, equipment specifically, tap all those artifacts to equip your artifact dude and then swing in for big damage. We can we can a little bit back that up by the includes spell skite mm-hmm. to to not be able to target your one big suited up Voltron struct. Right. And also wonder to make it hard to block. Yep. <laughs> 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 okay, and then we've got a get this twenty five card equipment package. Oh. So many, and I think a lot of them are going to be ones that people know. If you scan them quick, like like I did, because I just read the names and knew what they did. Right? Do you, did you see any, or did you run into any that you didn't know what they did right off the bat? You scan. I'll read you some of the heavy hitters. We've got sword, sword, sword. Sword, 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 swift boot boots, lightning greaves, whisper silk cloak. There's one we haven't seen for a while. That's shroud and unblockable. Locks it on war hammer. We've got helm of the host, Nissan's big fat hammer. We've got all the heavy hitters. I don't know why whisper, whisper silk cloak is in here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because once you put it on your dude, you can't equip it anymore. Maybe it's the last equipment. I don't know. Is like, there any equip for free stuff? Not really. Not really, no. Not really. I super, just super quick. I like the include of uh, the butt forged battle axe in here. So every time you swing in with your dude, it makes a copy of itself, which makes your dude bigger. Yes, that's very good. That's pretty cool. Does it make a copy of itself or a copy of blood forged battle axe? It makes another another butt forged battle axe. Which would just make your current struck bigger. Yeah, and then you equip and your another butt forged battle axe will actually give you. Plus, th- uh, plus three, plus one, right? Yeah. Because you get the plus two from the battle axe and then the plus one, plus one from another Karn from struct. A, from it being an artifact, yeah. Okay, so here's what I want to pick your brain about. Thing of note, I want to oh, just, while okay. we're talking about the equipment package, the Sword of Hearth and Home in this deck, I find mildly strange because I think you, if you want to equip it to Urza? Is that is that what that's there for? Because if you exile your construct token, it just goes away forever. Oh, nonbo. And, and there's a couple of dudes that come in. I guess there's a like a trophy mage or whatever that searches for artifacts and stuff. But I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it 
it fits. So yeah. maybe maybe it's the sword that he had. He's got the in the list here. I, I assume these are the printings that he has. He's got the extended art foil from Mati Ho Ho. So maybe that's why he played it. Is it a sweet card? You might as well bust it out and play it. But this would probably be better served as a as a different sword. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's actually got sword of blue and red. Yeah, fire and ice. Which is a yeah, good pretty good sword. It's a pretty good sword. Mind you, you can't can't target your own guy if you're playing blue spells. I don't know how many th- times we would ever want to do that, but like zero times. Okay. Zero well, times you want to do that. Play sort of blue and red then. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, here's what I wanted to pick your brain about. Maybe. We touched on it last week. And I think a little bit we're going to touch on it on tomorrow's bonus show again. So maybe we'll do a little bit here, a little bit there. Encourage everybody to tune in on YouTube twice. Okay. <laughs> sure. I was talking about casual versus competitive not being like a linear, continuous scale or spectrum. Right. Left is casual, right is competitive. Right? Sure. Turn up the good, turn down the suck, whatever. Right. right? Instead, I, I thought... What if there are, between casual and competitive, left and right, what if there are, like, vertical sliders that also go up, where it's like, oh, I'm going to crank up my my ramp up to 9 or 10. I'm going to crank up my, my interaction or my removal section to 9 or 10. But my win con, Karn Voltron struct, is left down at, like, a 1 or a 2. Is that an, is that an accurate way to, to look at how competitive a deck is? It's hard to say, and I'm saying it's hard to say because I've seen air quotes, because I've played against Lenny's Gumball deck lots of times, that deck is not bad. Is it CDH? Absolutely not. But I've seen it hang with some decks that it has no business hanging with. Based on price? Well, just based on the fact that like you you look at it and think, oh, this deck is full of a bunch of shitty commons and uncommons. And it's fiddly and dirtly. Yeah, but here's the thing with fiddly and dirtly. It's Urza. (laughs) <laughs> okay. And, oh, yeah, Brandon was not that. Yes, he is. Yes, he Urza is. Urza is that strong. He can make a shitty card into a good card and a good card into a great card and a great card into a, the greatest card. Because he's he's Urza and he's really strong and he's got a really great suite of abilities stapled to him. And so he brings decks like this just up another couple of levels. And I think that the consistency is what takes a drop off when you play decks like this. Because when you're trying to build a, what is it, a, a Rube Goldberg machine or whatever? Yeah, yeah. In Lenny's deck, sometimes you're just going to miss a couple of pieces and the machine doesn't work. And and you don't have, a, you're not playing all of the expensive tutors because they cost more than 25 cents. Exactly. So the deck just doesn't work and it, it comes off as like, oh, okay, super casual, whatever. And I know Lenny, so I never thought, oh, this deck is, he's CD, he's sharking me. Because yeah. I know Lenny, right? But if that deck worked at like a table with three strangers, I'll bet you one of those people would think, Lenny, you dirtbag. Yeah. People keep talking the- about you like you're all cool, and then you bring this dirtily CDH, you take a 20-minute turn, and then you just kill everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that person was would probably be probably be the least experienced player who, who yeah. doesn't know as much about the format or, or maybe – assessed a few threats on the board not as optimally or as dangerously as they should have? I think that the overall, with going back to the, the sliders example, I think that maybe there wasn't a bunch of sliders, more as one big one, and as you move to the, what was it, left was casual? Left is casual. You slide the slider up on variants. Okay. And... So it's like almost like a like a graph, y- right? Yeah. Where it's like the, the further you get to the left... The more variance you have. Exactly. And like your CDH decks are loaded with tutors and redundancy and all this stuff to make your deck do that one thing really, really well. And everything around it is insulation to make it to protect that thing. Whereas when you're moving down with decks like this, you can still do the Chris, thing. Chris that, Bones' deck, you mean? Yeah. You're doing the thing that the CDH deck kind of wants to do. Protect its pr- commander. Protect its and, shit. And protect its combo. It's it's combo in this case being the car instruct being super strong and doing all that stuff. But, like, sometimes you're just going to end up with a bunch of equipment on board and you're, like, Urza costs 12 now. Uh-huh. So I uh, I attack you with my trophy mage <laughs> is what you get instead, right? And with Lenny's deck, you get the one where it's like, okay, well, 
attack you with my 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 investigate hound. Exactly, because you just you didn't get the pieces you need to make a bunch of constructs. And I think that that's what you get when you move along the the scale with an Urza is just your variance goes Okay, up. well, hey, hold on. Let's I was going to say step let's step back a couple <clears throat> minutes, but you brought it back. What if we switch out Urza? We are playing an Emery in this 99 and you could you could say everything you said about about Urza. You could also say it about Emery. So it's not the greatest example if you switch them in the 99 and in the in the command zone. Give Emery a read and then people know what we're talking about. Emery Lurker of the Lock is a 1-2 for blue 2. This spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control when Emery Lurker of the Lock enters the battlefield. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Tap. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. Wow. So, <laughs> lots of abilities like Urza. Yeah. Costs essentially nothing negates command tax a good se- good percentage of the time yep. you can cast stuff from your graveyard typically you see like mana rocks or whatever that generate more mana than they're worth and you make lots of mana with emery right cool bad example to say okay let's just switch urza and emery because emery's going to do lots of the same stuff urza does but pick random mono blue commander and then look at this deck and and answer my question again, sort of. Left is casual, right is competitive. Are are where do we sit, and for what reason? I still think that we're well constructed deck can hang with maybe not air quotes what everybody thinks is CEDH, but can be competitive, well tuned, optimized metas, powerful decks, fast combos, interaction removal. But now you're not playing Urza. So are we yeah. are we doing the same thing because 99% of the cards are the same? In this particular deck, which is why I think people kind of stay away from Voltron strategies in general, is, yeah, you could put almost any blue commander in here, and the deck would probably work the exact same way, but be less horrifying because it linear linearizes it makes your your game plan more linear because now you're playing a commander that's obviously meant to be suited up and swung in for big damage oh, whereas yeah. urza gives you the urza option of spin in the wheel to play shit for free and he himself makes you that giant dude to swing in with as opposed to having to make him into the giant dude ah. that you're going to swing with so it's like urza urza in addition to get this letting your equipments tap to equip themselves. Yeah. So your equipments have equipped for free, sort of. Ish. Equipped for less. He also gives you like two cracks at doing what you're doing. Yeah. Right? By equipping a huge construct or just needing like half as much damage if you equip Urza himself. Yeah. That's cool. Hey? That's kind of it gives you the option. And again, that's why Urza is so strong. If you wanted to actually make this deck sit lower on a power scale, if you're using a power scale, you would Put Urza in the 99 and replace him with somebody else. Yeah. Because I think Urza always sits higher than the deck he's had it, helming is constructed to to be. Like, I'm going to build a... I'm going to use the fucking numbers. I'm going to build a five. Your deck's probably a six or a seven. A fucking because seven. <laughs> it's a fucking it seven now <laughs> because Urza's at the, at the helm of it. Yeah. Like, this deck would be like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Be- and, if Emery and I, was there, I right? Think it's, I think that's because, like, you're you're going to play Soul Ring. You're, you're going to play a Mana Crypt if you own one in every deck. You're going to play an Urza Saga card, like the 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 Enchantment Land. You're going to play that in decks that play Artifacts. Yeah. You're going to just play those so Urza makes them better. Let's, let's go back to my example again, though, from a couple minutes ago. If it's totally different out to left field now... Zerzoth from last week. This sounds a little bit like the example that we were talking about last week with Underwear Breach and and all the wheel effects, filling up your graveyard, making mana, exiling stuff, or like Devil Tribal or Devil, Devil Voltron with like Red Ritual Mana, right? Sa- same yeah. conversation, right? This sounds a lot like Ancestral Animar combo with all the teamer backup deflecting SWAT and all the blue control or... Animorphs. It sounds like, based on the commander, I just said Boogeyman Animar, Boogeyman Urza. Yeah. You could put, you could put, um, you could put 
a Phyrexian theme deck Yogmoth in there too. Phyrexian theme deck, uh, the new the new Vornclex. Sure, yeah. You could put him in there. Yeah. Deck gets notched up when somebody hears the boogeyman word. Yeah, like we did, we the did boogeyman, a whole, the boogeymander. We did a whole arc on boogeymanders. And we did the top five and five on them too. <laughs> we sure did, and I think that that Urza is a an exceptional example of a boogeymander because he is terrifying, and it's for fucking good reason. Okay, well that's that's good stuff. And here's the thing: tomorrow's bonus show. Everybody's got to tune in again because we're going to talk a little bit on how to navigate that specifically now that in-store game gaming for us is back in sesh right and you are on a bunch of streams with people you might not know or people that the streamers don't want to give the wrong idea to like oh this is just like cutthroat commander where it might be like <laughs> casual beer drink stream right yeah how do you do it on vedh that's going to be tomorrow okay i was i was able to answer the question because yeah. there's a it's a very simple answer to that question, Ryan. Who I'm very excited and, to tell you. And you know what the thing is? The thing you write it down. You write down the simple answer okay. because there 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 isn't. Oh, there super is. <laughs> there <laughs> we'll, definitely we'll, is. We'll get in it tomorrow. Yeah, That's we, the we teaser will. for the teaser. Yes, it is. I, I want to mention one other thing. Everything that we just talked about, blue commander, switch out Urza at the helm of this Voltron list, plug in any other blue commander. Moving over to Lenny's deck, I think Lenny's is built around Urza in a way that if it wasn't Urza, now the deck sucks. Like, if you put Emery at the head of this deck, now the deck sucks. And I think that that might be a... I don't want to say a better version of of, play, of trying to convince somebody that Urza isn't as powerful as it as it is, but I think that building a deck that kind of focuses just around Urza doing Urza things, it and then just kind of doing them with suboptimal cards yep. is an easier way to convince somebody, hey, this is actual a casual Urza deck. I just, I like playing Urza. I like yeah. being dirty with artifacts. I like blue. I just want to do this because I think it's fun. You I mean, maybe fan the cards out and show them like, oh, this is my 25 cent deck. Yeah, exactly. And like, by no means, and here's the thing, this is where the internet confuses some kind of shit like this on Twitter because there's no tone or, or, or there's no greater understanding of conversation. Oh, we're coming for Twitter. Here, here it is. Take Urza and put him at the helm of a gumball deck and Urza sucks because the gumball deck sucks. That's flawed logic. <laughs> yes, it is. Lenny's deck is still a very well-constructed deck. Yeah. And it still works together. It yeah. still pulls the ability out of the commander to make the deck run better. Yeah. And vice versa. The the cards are in there to take advantage of Urza's abilities. Yes. So it's not like saying the deck is bad. And if you want to run a Yogmoth or an Urza or a Sliver Queen or a whatever, a Najila the Blade Blossom, like pick your CEDH commander, Thrasios and whoever the fuck. Yeah. Pick and then just build a bad deck. And like that, that isn't how you want to play Magic. No. Because people don't want to play bad decks. No. And you don't usually play Magic just so you could like. Oh, cast my Urza once and I have to play shitty cards for my 99 just <laughs> yeah. so my friends don't gang up on me, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Because you don't need all the forces and free and fast mana to to play a good, in this case, Urza deck. Yeah. But substitute any powerful commander. You can build it in a way that maybe you put a 25 cent hard limit on card value. You could make a theme. You could do all the kinds of things that's been covered over the last 10 years of people yeah. having this conversation. Yeah, we've all we've talked about this a lot on the show and stuff, like just making your deck different and fun and cool, and th they are. These ones are. They're fun, but they're and they're strong. And I think that people who see them out in the wild may be leery at first, but I, I don't think that you really need to be, because I think that this is where Urza needs to sit. If you don't want to see the hateful fucking I hate you Urza deck, yep. these are good ones to sit down with and play. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I, I've, got a, I've got a personal Brando question. I'm going to hit you with that just oh. in one sec. Oh, you shit. say sit down and play. We're going to jump back over to, to Mr. Bones' deck one more time, because mm -hmm. i got one more thing to pick your brain about oh, shit. with regards to these two decks. Okay. We have a Trinisphere. <laughs> I love Trinity Sphere. And I know you like stacks. I do. And I was talking a lot about left is casual, right is is competitive with all the sliders that dial up any one category. Sure. That's the where that's kind of where my brain is kind of developing that thought. Sure. In the stacks vertical slider category. Okay. Is zero 
the right amount and one piece pushes it all the way up to 10? Or is there some play in there? Urza notwithstanding, I'm saying stacks pieces in general. You play Blood Moon in decks, yep. Back to Basics is in decks, Trinisphere's in decks that don't have a lot of fast mana, so you're slowing your opponents down. Yep. I think that there's a, a... I've made this argument a bunch of times. I wrote a thing about it. I don't know if it's still out there, but if you can find it, that's cool. Where I think that stacks is okay in a even a casual game as long as you're not like doing the hard lockdown of a game. The harder you want to lock the game all the way down without just winning right away, mm -hmm. you're moving up the competitive scale a little bit. You mean like the harder you want to lock the game down without having, let's say, a combo that can get through your own lockdown? Exactly. Okay. Like if you're just playing, example, I play Stax Traxa. Yeah. It is a Stax deck. I make no bones about it. My, but the, the way that I'm Staxing the table is I add taxes and I take away value, as opposed to not letting you untap, not letting you draw, not letting you do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just your spell costs two more. Your thing doesn't do your, its thing when it comes into play. I just take away some of those value bits. Oh, torpor orbs and die triggers. And exactly, and that's how my deck is constructed, and when I play it in a more casual setting, I find that it, it can hang, but it's not so oppressive that people are like, fuck, I hate playing against this deck. I hate playing against Brando. This is the worst. And I find that and I have I have one hard stacks lock in the deck, which requires me to alt a planeswalker and have my tangle wire last for a while. Oh. <laughs> but once those things have happened, the game is over. Yes. The game is over now. And I think that that's where the it's the same as if I did any other two card combo, right? Yes. If you have a hard lock that people can't get through, that is the same in my book as a combo. Yeah. The, you are incapable of winning. Therefore, it would stand to reason that you should lose. Yeah. If you can't win, but I still can, you will lose. So I think in a deck like and, this... And we'll okay, just we'll, we'll fill in the negative space here. Okay. Atraxa being a, a Vigilance flyer that proliferates other stacks, pieces, planeswalkers, or plus ones on herself is yeah. how you win. Yeah. And that's demonstrable through a hard lock because they can't cast things or... Or block. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's cool. And I think that in a deck like an Urza deck, even if you just want to play it, play it casual, like if I was going to build this, this very deck we're looking at right now from Mr. Bones, I would cut the Trinosphere and put a Winter Orb in right now. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, put a basic island in. No, I would think... Because sometimes just... You really are a piece of trash. <laughs> well, if you're going to... Don't half measures yourself. Don't just make a game miserable because Trinisphere is like, oh, fuck. You think Trinisphere is worse to play through than than Winter Orb? I think that Trinisphere as the only stacks pieces in a deck is dishonest. Oh, yeah? I think. Yep. Pourquoi? Like, that is how so? How so? I think that if you're going to just play something, because Trinisphere just slows the fucking game down. Doesn't doesn't Winter Orb do Winter that? Orb turns off some of your opponent's stuff. Like, this is like, oh, I don't want to play Winter Orb, so I'll play Trinisphere instead. Just play fucking Trinisphere. You only have one Win of Winter them. Orb, you mean? Winter Orb, yeah. Like, just play Winter Orb. Just play it. Oh. Yeah. I mean, maybe that makes me the asshole, but I don't think it would make this deck either much more powerful or any more oppressive. Oh. I, I really don't. That's that's a let us know in the comments. Hey, Winter Orb or Trinisphere or neither in, I, in, in the comments. Yeah. As your only stacks piece, you have one stacksy card in your deck. Do you want it to be Trinisphere or Winter Orb. In Urza, where you can turn it on and off for yourself. Oh, yeah. I was going to say Back to Basics is in there, too, because it's kind of the same thing, but yeah. not the same as Trinisphere or 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 Winter Orb. Yeah, because this one you can turn off. And it, like, this is the sp in this specific situation, I'm not saying in any deck where you're going to run one stacks piece, play Winter Orb instead of Trinisphere, but in Urza, you play Winter Orb over Trinisphere because it benefits you way more and if you're oh gonna, yeah, because well, I guess if Trinisphere is tapped at the end when you untap, yeah, because you can turn the Winter Orb off to untap all. Oh, of your but shit. you have to tap the Winter Orb on your turn so you can cast your creatures and artifacts, and then it's tapped until the end of your next turn. So Winter Orb would be better, yeah, because you can untap it and then leave it untapped until the end of fucking player, player force turn. Exactly. Oh, oh, I understand now. Yeah, like it's just, it's a more powerful card. And if you're going to play one, play the best version of that one in this case. It's already a lightning rod for removal. Just, just play the effing card. Huh. Yeah. 
That's what you had to say about that. That's what I think. <laughs> the, I mean, the, that, that's what I think. If you're going to play one of something in a deck as a just in case or as a contingency or as like a way of trying to claw your, like slow everybody down so you can claw your way out of some kind of deep hole you found yourself in, yeah. play the thing that does that the best. Yeah. Or you know what? The, you know what it kind of feels like? And I don't know if this is true or not, but w- w- Urza, Urza was Mahdi Ho. Yes. In oh, uh, 18? 19. Uh, uh, date, 18. Dates and times, man. I don't, I don't know. Whenever. A couple yeah. years ago. Happened. A couple years ago it happened. At this point, it's like maybe this deck over the last two years, let's say, has been evolving and evolving and evolving. And that one Trinisphere is the start. The start of, <laughs> oh man, my play group's like catching up. They're starting to get really good. I got to like do more things to lock them down because my one for one like fierce guardianship and flusterstorm and stuff isn't good enough anymore. And I think that's when you start to revisit the the rule zero conversation with with your play group to say, hey, like this is getting pretty intense. I don't really want to play cards like Winter Orb and Trinisphere, but I've been putting them in because you guys are building faster combo decks than my fucking Urza deck because it's a because it's a Karn struct Voltron deck. Yeah, it's the arms race. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play Karn, guys, and like, well, I'm gonna bust out Muxis and I'm gonna play Sliver Queen. And it's like, oh my god. Yeah, and 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 we run into that in our own dude bro playgroup sometimes. Yeah. And and that's when we go to and and this is why there's no simple answer, like you said there was. We go to Super is. I go. Oh yeah, I'll just play Lord of Tressorhorn. And you say, that is not a fucking casual jank deck, Brian. <laughs> that deck is grindy as fuck and plays Infect with Chandra's Ignition. Because you know all the tricks. Yeah. And you know how to beat it. Yeah. Right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to try and ramp and Infect harder. Yeah. It's the arms race. So we have yeah. to like keep each other honest as a play group and, yeah. and as a local game store, as a community in general. That's why you and I are doing this episode today. Yeah. It's part of like us having the conversation and, and having people listen and, and keeping everybody at a fucking level that's like down to earth enough to listen and, and talk. It's not about, I think that... Poo-poo Urza, poo-poo competitive, poo-poo people who want to, you know? Yeah, I, I think that the the arms race conversation, which again, I think we've had a few times, it's not predicated on the the right, I don't, I don't want to say the right, but I'm going to I'm gonna use the word right, way of looking at a, a, a casual game Mm -hmm. and if you're looking to play casual magic and just have some fun with your buddies and stuff getting into that kind of arms race like oh this urza deck is too fast or lord of tressor horn isn't as jank as you say it is ryan (laughs) i only say that so that when you go and say this is my jankest deck it's not that jank it's pretty good and and it might be your jankest one but that doesn't make it a jank deck i like that i like fucking that it might it might be my jankest one is it i don't know it might be my jankest be. one, but that doesn't mean it's jank because jank, aka power level, yeah, is relative, mm-hmm. right? Like, I was going to use a really dirty example, but a, <laughs> a, a weak deck to our play group might be a strong deck to others' play group. Correct. You and I, and many of the people that we play with, and many of the people who listen and who are in the nation, they know that. But somebody new coming into Commander doesn't know that. Yeah, you're going to play with some new guy. They don't And, they don't and know. even worse, somebody new coming into Magic might not know that. Yeah. I, I want to play this deck. It's my favorite Legacy deck, but it's not Tier 1 anymore. Then they make a Commander deck that, that they take the same attitude into. Yeah. And they use some of the same cards. I don't know. Maybe maybe Force of Will, Pact of Negation. Maybe yeah. they're like, Urza, fuck, I can't play Trinisphere and Legacy anymore. Right, and yeah. all of a sudden we have we have Chris Bones's deck. I'm not saying that that's what Chris did. No, but that kind of thing happens, and it happens, it happens because people are new to the format, and there's lots of those yeah. right now. And it happens because there's people who are new to Magic, and the format as as a result. Yeah. And there's lots of those right now. So again, it it keeps us grounded and honest, and it keeps everybody listening honest. And my jankest deck might be powerful. Like, it's won games at FNM before. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mostly by Infect and Chandra's <laughs> Ignition. But, but also sometimes just be like, oh, uh, yeah, my guy regenerates. Uh, oh, fuck. 
Uh, you're tapped out. You know, take ten, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, like, take ten. You're only at seven. Yeah. You shouldn't have fucking left yourself open, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just regular magic stuff. Yeah, read the card, asshole. Yeah, Double yeah. Fingers, right? He's got. It's like Hogak. Hey, just trample right at the very bottom. That's yeah. how Lord of Tressorhorn is to regenerate right at the very bottom after <laughs> like after the flavor text. <laughs> you're just like, oh yeah, we don't care about this. You think it's like the 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 person that the quote is attributed to in the flavor text yeah but it's actually the word regenerate <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so here's here's where we're at here's where we're at i think we've established power level is relative yes there are some really good ways to theorize like how powerful your deck is maybe how good's the mana how many tutors how fast can it or consistent can it combo yeah Right, all of which that are are better than one to ten, yeah, <laughs> on the number scale yeah. because all decks are sevens. And I think a good way of looking at it, I just thought of this maybe maybe I'm wrong about this. I'm gonna throw it down anyway. See sure, what, this, see what this, you think. this this is another thing that we've learned. I th- maybe okay. I think that one way of looking at is my deck either stronger than I meant it to be. I don't want to say too strong, but like, is it doing what I want it to do because it all is a cohesive whole or is it doing what I want it to do because it's just a a pile of really powerful cards and I think that Bones' deck kind of does that because you can take Urza right out and the deck still kind of works still Emery still Mr. Grimora still a bunch of like Gitaxian Probe Ponder Ristic Study exactly and then Pact of Negation Force of Negation Swan Song yeah and you look over again other side of the coin with Lenny's if you took Urza out the deck doesn't work anymore yeah. Right? And I think that when you're building these decks, it's Not too... because the deck is designed poorly, but, but because... because it's contingent upon Urza being the commander. Exactly. Precisely. And I think that there's really two good, really good illustrations of how to build for a commander that you want to play that maybe has a bad reputation. Like, you can still build a solid deck. Like, Mr. Bones' deck is good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not too strong. It's not secretly that deck. It no, a, certainly It isn't. doesn't have a bunch of infin- infinite combos just hidden in it or anything, but it's it's a good-ass deck. It's just a good deck. It's not a low-powered Urza deck. It's just a good deck, whereas Lenny's is a lower-powered Urza deck. That just happens to also be good. Exactly. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Get this. This is why... Th- Sometimes this conversation is like a farce because you sit down, Chris Bones playing this Urza deck with all the artifacts and the fast mana, blah, blah, blah. And Lenny's playing his Urza deck, same pod. Yeah. You and I jump in the pod. Oh, no, not you and I, but two two random strangers. Sure. Who, who they give their spiels to, hey, we're both playing Urza. It's a fucking science experiment. This is my deck. This is my deck. Two random guys, uh, Brian and, and... Brian and Rando. Brian and Rando are like, oh, yeah, this is my deck. This is my deck. Who? It's a crapshoot. Who's going to win? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because you've got one well-constructed Urza deck, one higher-powered Urza deck, and two randoms that are like wild cards. Yeah. And they could they could do the, the Zerzoth fucking underworld wheel thing, yeah. wheel thing and, and just by accident because it's actually like a goblin deck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just happen to do their thing. And and this is the final thing. It's not relevant to the, to the, to the topic du jour today, but... A lot of EDH decks can just win, like, on turn three. Oh, yeah. And people don't even realize it because it's, like, a two- or three-card combo or whatever, you, right? And you, it's like, you, you might play 100 games with a particular deck in a year if you play once a week or twice a week. You might see that once or twice a year. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think it's worth just c- keeping a level head and keeping each other down to earth if you play it in LGS or a, or a consistent play group and then just being honest and upfront with cards in your deck and the strategy that you're trying to execute when you're playing with strangers. Also, we're going to get into this a little bit deeper tomorrow, another teaser for you, but the fastest your deck can go isn't how fast your deck goes. Yeah, no. So just keep that in mind when you're having the talk because just... You got you got, oh yeah. you got got decks that can turn two people, right? I have a deck that can turn one people. Oh, yeah? But turn one? Turn one. I wonder if Zada can turn one if I put a jeweled lotus in. Right? Like, Maybe that's a tomorrow talk. Yeah, and it's like, turn one? Holy fuck, that deck is insane. No, it's, if I draw like these opening five. It takes eight cards. Yeah, it, yeah it takes <laughs> like, I think it's five. I think it's it five. is five cards. I can, I can turn one the whole table in multiple different ways with these five cards on turn one. But like, 
when's that going to happen? Yeah. It'll happen someday, but probably not today or maybe not tomorrow. Most likely not. Most likely <laughs> not. <laughs> but we'll get into that a little bit tomorrow. This is this is where I want to end. We talked about a lot of shit. Trinosphere versus Winter Orb. Yeah. In this deck. Yes. <laughs> Sliders vertically uh, or horizontally. Graphs. If you're underneath the, the bar, the line on the graph, are you casual? If you're over it, are you competitive? We, t we didn't really talk exactly about that, but people can use their mind's eye to imagine what that looks like. Yeah. Okay, this is not a not a trig trigonomically tri trigonometry <laughs> podcast. I can't even fucking say it. Calculus cookout podcast. <laughs> yes, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> we featured a couple great community decks. Chris Bones, Lenny Woolley brought her links in the show notes to both decks, and of course, Lenny's writing writing for EDH Rec. <sighs> Final thought of the day after you thank our glorious sponsor. Big thanks to. FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs. Check them out to buy all your cards, all your, your gumball your, stuff. Your foil old border Urzas for $150 minus 5%. With CCO special fusion code CCO Fusion 5. That's it? Hell yeah. I think that's the, pro that's the promo code, right? CCO Fusion 5? Yeah. Yeah? Shit yeah. Yeah. So overall, I hope that you all enjoyed our little spitball session on how to build a boogie mander and have it be maybe less terrifying than it should be. And I think that we illustrated over the last hour or so that you can do it in at least two ways with this particular general. So next time you see an Urza sit down across from you, maybe give him a chance. because Or any yeah. other boogeymander, right? Yeah. Like anything that you think that you know what it's going to be built like, ask the questions. Is it built like that? And just be an open listener. And if you're the one being asked or having to give the answer, I mean, be an open communicator to what strategy, how fast, yeah. even particular cards. Honesty is the best policy. There it is. Ah, there it is. There it is. Speaking of being honest, I assume Ryan says he has a bunch of stuff he's going to ask me, and I will endeavor to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! <laughs>